Hey everybody, Josh here. Welcome back to the channel where I talk about IT, cybersecurity, education, and career things. In today's video, I'm going to be answering another viewer's question. They already work in help desk, but they want to get into coding and they're just kind of wondering what the next step would be. So yeah, I'll get right into answering this. But before that, consider following me on Instagram. I'm trying to grow my Instagram for sure and trying to post a lot of nice new content on there. So check that out. Getting right back to the video and answering the viewer's question. It kind of depends. There's a lot of different things that you can do, to be honest. It's really good that you already have two years worth of experience but if you want to work in coding lend what you're doing now to kind of add some coding into it a little bit some good positions for this may be like cloud support engineer with a focus on like apis or like api management or like a web app service or something like this that has some kind of code involved in it because there's kind of mixture of it in there like along with some coding and some cloud infrastructure it's just like a, a really nice segue i guess that's kind of actually what i do for my job i think i talked about a little bit in this video. Um, I do a lot of coding in my job. I don't know if I can say like I'm a software engineer, but I, I code in Python in probably like 90% of like what I'm doing is like writing code in Python, doing things pertaining to the cloud and, and automating things. So like a good example of this is if you become like a DevOps engineer or something like this, you're going to be marrying IT uh, with coding and automation a little bit. And I, I feel like based on what you said, you might find that pretty interesting to do. And there's a lot of nice tutorials on how to set up DevOps pipelines. There's probably a bunch of stuff on YouTube. I know a cloud guru has some nice stuff as well. So what you could do to kind of get into this job is you could probably pick up one of those tutorials or maybe even two and go through the tutorial a couple of times and maybe like learn how to set up like the CIDC pipeline and, and automate a bunch of stuff and make sure you like really understand how to do it. The way to do this is like doing it over and over and over again. And then I would set up a portfolio and then kind of publish a quote unquote project out of, of how to set up a pipeline, whether or not you're using Azure DevOps or like whatever you happen to be using, put some nice illustrations, explain what you're doing, put it on your resume and just make sure you're like really good at it. And then kind of, you know, when you start interviewing for DevOps engineer or whatever it is, try to get like a, a long list of DevOps interview questions and like practice articulating your answers to those and just kind of learn as much as you can about the DevOps world and like implement it and like get really good at it. And then just, you know, go and work in DevOps. Um, another alternative, um, as I kind of mentioned, would be a cloud support engineering, maybe for like Azure or AWS. A lot of stuff in the cloud is really automatable and people often automate it and people, large organizations like need help using certain APIs to figure out how to automate things. So you're like an Azure cloud support engineer for Azure app services or something, which is the service people use to create and publish web applications. You can get really good at like using Docker and like automating things and like writing code that runs in app service. Um, you're not necessarily a software engineer, but you're kind of marrying like coding and IT together and which I think is really fun and you'll probably enjoy it based on your comment anyway. So that, that is one option you could do just a cloud support engineer, but try to focus in an area that has a lot of coding in it. It shouldn't be hard to do because a lot of people like really avoid coding for some reason and if you become a cloud automation engineer you'll probably find like a lot of your coworkers like don't know how to code or like, they're bad at it or something so it just makes you that much more valuable and as to how to actually get good at coding, I'd recommend watching this video, The Truth About Coding. I just kind of explain, you know, that you don't need to memorize everything. It's just like a, a matter of understanding it, right? And then being able to reference stuff on like Google and like Stack Overflow and that kind of thing. Maybe check out this video where I talk about if I could start, to, if I had to start coding from scratch again, like what I, what I would do exactly. And then as far as really developing your core skill, like how to actually like get good at coding, I'd watch this video, which is, this is the methodology I use to go from like, I was like pretty average coder to being able to like, you know, I got a offer from Tenable. I got a L4 offer from Amazon. It was for a security engineer with some coding in it. Um, and I got, uh, I passed my Google software engineering phone screen. And then I ended up just accepting a job at Microsoft doing cloud automation engineering. Check out this video. I talk about like how to like really get actually good at coding. As far as resources go, I'd recommend a cloud guru for, you know, anything with DevOps. They, they have some nice stuff in there. And and then I would recommend Code with Mosh. I'll put a link in the description. It's an affiliate link, but I used Code with Mosh to learn my initially learning of data structures and algorithms to learn Python. I, I used Python on my job all day and I passed my Google technical phone screen with Python and I, I learned Python originally from Code with Mosh. So check out that. It's, he's really, really good. I like his material. Um, but those are a couple of things you can do. If you want to become like straight up software engineer, um, I would recommend watching this video by Clem. He kind of talks about it. Clem is a genius. Uh, you don't have to be a genius, but just use his methodology. 
Um, it's pretty much the same thing that I did. Mine was like a different flavor. You can watch my video as well. For sure, if you do this, you're, you're gonna be you're gonna be really good at programming to say the least. If what I said confused you, watch this video on analysis paralysis and then just pick the thing that sounds the most interesting to you and then feel free to pivot along the way if you need to. But yeah, I hope this helps. Again, follow me on Instagram. I really appreciate it a lot and we'll see you in the next videos. Bye-bye.